Without our vagus nerves, we would be dead in a second. The vagus nerves, there are two of them, one on the left and one on the right, exit the skull at the very top of the neck. Each nerve divides into two. One descends to supply the front half of the body and the heart and lungs and the other to the back of the body and lower organs. It's thought that the back part originates from when we were reptilian and the front part since our mammalian evolution. The back branch instigates the freeze response. That's the response when we're in huge danger or I feel like our life is threatened. This nerve is known as the great wanderer because it supplies almost every part of our body. It causes blood vessels to widen and fill in our organs and lungs. It lowers our heart rates, breathing rates, lowers blood pressure. It controls our facial expressions and the way we speak, as well as our hormones and our moods and our behaviours. This nerve bridges between the body and the brain. In fact, it bridges between the two to such an extent that really we can see that there's no need to see the two as separate at all. Mainly the vagus nerve is the conductor of our rest, digest, relax and repair nervous system. That fantastic system is fueled by a hormone called acetylcholine, which powers all the pleasant things like enjoyment and digestion, sexuality, sleep, socialization. So why is this important to long haulers? Well, long COVID is an inflammatory condition. In the blood of many long haulers, elevated levels of cytokines, as well as other immune cells, have been found, indicating inflammation. The nervous system of many long haulers has been inflamed and disrupted, possibly due to the virus remaining active in those nerves. And what does inflamed mean? Well, remember the cytokine storm that caused the death of so many people from COVID-19. This was severe inflammation in response to the first appearance of the virus. It's probable that a mini cytokine storm is still occurring in long COVID. The part of our nervous system that's responsible for maintaining inflammation is our fight or flight system, known as the sympathetic nervous system. This system causes the body to inflame. So long haulers are forced by the inflammation left by the virus or the virus itself to live in a fight or flight state, even if we don't realize it. Now back to the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is in charge of the opposite system to fight or flight, known as the parasympathetic nervous system. This system is anti-inflammatory. Unfortunately, it's being suppressed by the fight or flight and the inflammation. This calming, parasympathetic nervous system doesn't get a look in. Even though life in the parasympathetic state is a lot more healthy and more enjoyable, it's being constantly overshadowed, overcome and repressed by fight and flight. In any attack on the nervous system, such as in long COVID, the vagus nerve must be affected. This would mean a change in our heart rates and breathing rates, and that will then affect the amount of blood and oxygen that reaches the body and brain. Because the vagus nerve is suppressed, it can't coordinate properly between the brain and the heart and the lungs. And the heart may beat abnormally fast, abnormally slow, or fluctuate between the two. And this is exactly what is happening in many long haulers. There's now evidence that Postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, or POTS, is caused by an overactive sympathetic nervous system. There's also evidence that the parasympathetic nervous system is underactive. One of the conditions many of us are suffering from is dysautonomia, which means a disordered nervous system. Dysautonomia is evidence that the vagus nerve is struggling to recover from the onslaught of covid 19 infection. It's a very sensitive nerve. It is put out quite easily by viral infection. In POTS, the nervous system fails to regulate blood pressure properly. Normally when you sit up or stand, the body prepares itself for action by pooling some of your blood to your legs and feet, where it expects it will need it to move. 
Um, because you only have a certain amount of blood, blood in the rest of the body has to de redistribute itself to keep a decent blood flow to the heart and the brain. But in POTS, the system doesn't really work. There's a drop in blood supply to the heart and brain when you become upright, and the heart races to compensate for this. Other symptoms of dysautonomia that you may have experienced are balance problems, sensitivity to noise and light, shortness of breath, chest pain, discomfort, dizziness, lightheadedness, vertigo, swings in body and skin temperature, ongoing tiredness, visual disturbances and blurred vision, difficulty swallowing, nausea and vomiting, constipation, brain fog, forgetfulness, memory loss, large swings in heart rate and blood pressure, which we've talked about, weakness, fainting, loss of consciousness, sweating less than normal or not at all, sleeping problems, migraines or frequent headaches, dehydration, frequent urination, incontinence, erectile dysfunction, low blood sugar, exercise intolerance. In other words, the heart rate doesn't adjust to changed activity levels. Aerobic exercise stimulates the vagus nerve, but as long haulers, it makes us worse, as it also mobilizes the immune cells that are carrying persistent COVID viral proteins, and it leads to exercise intolerance. Being bed bound or house bound, we need something we can do at home or in bed. There is a way that we can profoundly help ourselves. We can stimulate and strengthen the vagus nerve and therefore the slow down, rest, digest, repair and relax system, the parasympathetic nervous system. And we can do this in several ways by stimulating physically its chief controller nerve, the vagus nerve, where it lies in the neck or in the ears through massage. By breathing in the Mount Sinai hospital way and with a simple exercise which was invented by an osteopath called Stanley Rosenberg, who wrote a book called Accessing the Healing Power of the Vagus Nerve. And I will be showing you how to do the basic exercise. Modern medicine so recognizes the profound importance of the vagus nerve that it's created vagal nerve stimulators, which are little mechanical devices that are surgically placed under the skin near the vagal nerve output in the chest. Vagus nerve stimulation is used in hospitals and clinics for seizures and epilepsy and for depression, anxiety and pain. A study published in July 2021 took 20 long haulers and performed vagus nerve stimulation through the skin for 10 days. All 20 patients reported significant improvements in their symptoms, such as fatigue and depression. There were also improvements observed in their oxygen saturation and their muscle strength. Massaging the vagus will temporarily restore some calm to the nervous system. And many experts in this field believe that training this nerve to become more active not only improves its function in the short term, but possibly in the long term too. A great place to directly stimulate this nerve is where it runs superficially in the ear. It supplies the sensation of the ear and its branches can be easily found there. It's worth noting that stimulating the vagus nerve is not right for everyone. Vagal stimulation may cause a drop in blood pressure, a slowing of the heart rate, or a sudden sense of euphoria. So don't practice these techniques if you have very low blood pressure or a very low heart rate, or if you're driving in water or operating machinery. Always lie down or sit in a very supportive chair to do vagus nerve stimulation. <laughs> 